Hi everyone, Sarah here. I thought I would go ahead and run through this project. I'm going to complete it. I'm going to complete it quickly to save on the time of this video, um, teach you some things because I recognize I did not get to teach you as much as I wanted to on um, Wednesday. And since we have a long weekend, I just, I just want to provide you guys some extra reinforcement. So if you're watching this video bonus, I'm going to do this particular homework assignment with you. All right. I'm not going to make videos like this for every assignment. I'm only making this because I ran out of time on Wednesday. All right, so I have the uh, starter file open and I have the instruction file open on the right and I've already resaved my file with a two at the end. So I've already completed these steps over here where it says getting started. Something I like to do when I work on these assignments is I actually have both files open so if, at the same time and I have the window snapped side by side. So if you have a large enough uh, monitor to do this, it, it's really, really nice. Whenever I complete an, a step inside um, the instruction file, what I like to do is I actually like to highlight it with a color or I can um, do a strike through. Okay, so what I did here was every panel, we talked about panels in Microsoft Word, uh, the tools that are on the panel are the most commonly used tools, but there's this little notch in the lower right corner, you'll find them in several of these uh, sections. Um, what that means is it's an expander or a more button, and it lets you see all the tools that are associated with changing the font. So there's actually a lot more tools inside uh, Microsoft Word, um, and you can get to those with that little notch. So that's what that strike through is. Okay, so that crosses it out. I'm going to do a control Z because the highlight I think is good enough, but always can't help but teaching. All right, so uh, down here it says if the footer does not display your name, so you want to scroll down and make sure it has your name. This has my name, Sarah Marcel. All right, so we did that one. I'll just cross it out and scroll up. So you'll see there are 15 steps to this assignment and inside the instruction you always have an answer key so you can work on this and compare it as you're going along to make sure that you are comp completing the assignment correctly all right so whenever you work inside microsoft word the first thing i want you guys to do is on the paragraph panel i want you to turn on the show hide button i showed you this in class this shows you all the hidden characters so anytime you press the enter key the space bar the tab key you're going to see those represented right these little dots between each word though that's every time you hit the space bar right and every time you see this backwards p that's every time you press the enter key on your keyboard Something I'm going to emphasize with Microsoft Word is a paragraph in Microsoft Word is not three sentences with a topic sentence and actually like means something. That's actually a paragraph in writing. A paragraph in Microsoft Word is any time you press the Enter key. So if I press the Enter key four times, I just created four more paragraphs. There's no text here, but it's called a paragraph. Control Z. I'm going to undo that because that's not part of our document. Okay. All right. So keep that turned on and let's just run through this assignment. So we work at support services. They're creating a flyer to, to promote an upcoming seminar. Begin by making the following changes to the document theme and then the theme colors to coordinate the text colors with the red violet shades of the photo. So this is just kind of giving you some background. These are the actual steps you're going to complete. So the first thing we want to do is change the document theme to office. Now, ideally you will be completing this assignment after you've completed the training and the training actually walks you through all the steps it aligns with this project so you would have practiced all of the steps in this document here um, before you actually sit down and do it so the theme what a theme does is it allows you to change the colors and the images and the font styles of a document so that you don't have to be a graphic designer all right so to change the theme we're going to come up here to the design ribbon and there's a themes button and watch what happens. I'm actually, before I click on it, I, I click the arrow down, I get a gallery. Okay. And you can see I have a bunch of themes. If you float your cursor, as I float my cursor over the different themes, you can see how the document is changing. This is called live preview. So I'm going to go ahead and choose office because that's the theme they wanted us to choose. So I can cross out that uh, step. And by the way, this is called the mini toolbar. This comes up inside the document. It has all the same tools that you see up here on the main toolbar. It's just a shorter distance for you to click on. All right. The next one is to change the document theme colors to red violet. So on this design ribbon, there's a colors button. And you can see there's a lot of colors. As I'm hovering over it, take notice of that URL, that website address, right? That's changing. They want us to choose red violet. 
boom, done. All right, we're going to cross this off. All right, the next one is changing the mar margins to narrow. So on all four sides, you have this kind of gutter area. Our, our, this is our footer. It's inside the margin, right? So we're going to expand it. We're going to make the margins uh, skinnier. So I'm going to find that under the Layout tab, and I'm going to go to Margins, and you'll see there's something called Narrow. When I click on this, watch what happens to the text in the document. Boom, everything kind of spreads out. It changes those margins. Um, every time I complete a few steps, I'm going to click the Save icon up here in my Quick Access Toolbar, and that will save my file. I've already saved it on my computer where I save files. All right, we're going to cross that one out. All right, the next one is make the picture of the seminar participants more eye-catching, right? All right, so it says resize the picture to a width of five. So I'm going to click on my picture, right? And then... Um, you guys can't see this, this is a little toolbar here. All right, when you click on the picture, remember when I've inserted something other than text in my document, I get one or more ribbons that open up. So you'll see there is a picture format ribbon. If I click off the picture, that ribbon goes away. I click one time on the picture, the ribbon appears. My picture is selected and I can apply, I can modify or manipulate my picture using any of these tools up here. They want us to change the width of five inches. So this one is the width, by the way, hover over any tool on the toolbar, pause, wait, and you'll get a tooltip that tells you what you are looking at, right? This is convert, this is a quick style, this is change a picture, right? So I want the width. Now I can click these little arrows till I get to five, or but I'm impatient. I'm gonna click once to highlight the numbers, type the number five and press enter. Boom, it resizes the picture. And if I want, just to go scroll down here and check, look at that, hey, it's starting to look similar. The picture's bigger, that looks good, I'm on the right track, all right? The next one, it wants us to apply a simple black frame, excuse me, a simple frame black picture style. All right, so I'm just gonna take a moment to point this out and I'll reinforce it during class, but you, when you sit down to complete these projects, make sure you read the sentence in full before you go and try and figure out what you're doing. So this is telling you apply the simple frame black picture style. The key word here is picture style. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for something called picture styles. So with my picture selected, I know I can click on my picture. I know there's gotta be something on the ribbon. I can start looking around. Oh my, look here. There's a panel called picture styles right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this quick styles and I can start, okay, these are pre-made, um, uh, styles for the picture and you can see as I float over each one it starts changing how that picture looks right and each one has a name you just hover and wait and you get the name of it so right here is simple frame black you want to make it match there you go boom I added the picture frame and then the last part is apply the glow five point purple accent color to glow picture effect again these are the key words that I'm looking for where are picture effects all right, I come back to the picture. Maybe it's inside picture styles. I can start floating over these. This is picture border. Picture, look at that, picture effects. I'm gonna click the arrow. Okay, I'm looking for glow. There's glow. And then I'm looking for glow five point purple accent color two. So if you're not colorblind, I'm, I know that this is purple. If you are colorblind, then you will have to float over them until you find the names that match. And I believe five point purple accent color too. That's it right there. Boom. And there we go. And if I come over here to my instructions, you can see, all right, there's the picture. It's got the border and it's got kind of a pink glow around it. Very good. I'm going to save this file and I'm going to cross out these three. Okay. All right, keep going. Step number four, draw attention to the flyer's headline, insurance sales car seminar as follows. Change the paragraph spacing before to six point. Change the paragraph spacing after six point. Change the case to uppercase and change the font to 36 point, points. So the, we have to find this text in our flyer and change four things about it. So I'm gonna come over here to my flyer. I want insurance sales career seminar. I know that if I triple click it, that selects everything to the paragraph mark. So we're gonna change paragraph spacing. Paragraph spacing is the spacing that's attached 
to this paragraph mark. So notice down here in the flyer, do you notice how there, there's a space underneath between the 930 and 10, there's actually a white space? That's because there's spacing attached to this mark. That means every time you press the enter key, you can adjust the spacing above it and below it. That is what paragraph spacing is. And we're gonna practice more of this next week. So to find that, there's a couple places you can find that. Um, right here on the home ribbon, there's a par paragraph panel and there is something called line and paragraph spacing. Um, but we, these two options, they're pre-built. We're not, we don't know how much space we're adding. So it's not necessarily the best choice that I want to add. I actually want a little bit more control over how much I'm going to add. So I could come here and I could expand the paragraph a dialog box, right? A dialog box is anytime you get a window that opens asking you to make choices. And you can see here's a lot more tools that I have about paragraph spacing and right down here before and after. I want to add six points before and six point after so I can click my spinner up and my spinner up before and after and watch what happens when I press OK. Watch what happens right here. I'm going to click OK and you'll notice a little bit more space appear. You can see that shaded area actually grew a little bit because it's adding a little bit of space above it and below it. All right, I'm going to do a control Z. That's an undo. Control Z is undo the last step command Z if you're on the Mac. The other place to find paragraph spacing is on this layout ribbon and it's right here in this panel before and after. It's the same exact thing. I can click the spinner up for each one and I can see that it changes. All right, the next one is change it the case to uppercase. That means make all the letters uppercase letters and also change the font size. So anytime I'm doing anything with text, text and font mean the same thing. Anytime I'm doing something with the font size or the font, I can find it right here in the font panel. Um, so you know there's got to be a button that will take all the text and make it all uppercase. <laughs> Okay, you could retype it in all uppercase, but there's actually a button so we could start floating over. I happen to know this is the button and it's called change case. And if you pop the arrow down, you see, oh, look at that. I got all these different choices. We want uppercase and look at that. It makes it all capital letters. And then the last thing is we want to change the font size. How big is that? We want to change it from 28 to 36. You can type the number in or you can just click it if you happen to see it there. Save our file cross these four out, boom, all right? Next one, <clears throat> step five, bold the times 9.30 to 2.30 in the paragraph beginning Friday, September 18th to coordinate the formatting. So it's looking for this formatting right here. So I can select this and just apply bold, super easy, save. I cross this out, all right, look at that, we're already on the second page, almost done. Next one says copy the text signal one insurance group from the paragraph signal one insurance group and paste it in the blank paragraph after the seminar picture. So right here, you're be being given an instruction about a blank paragraph. And if you did not have this show hide button turned on, you might not know where that blank paragraph is. This is the reason why you want to have that show hide turned on. So they want us to copy signal one insurance group, signal one insurance group. We're going to copy this right here, control C on the keyboard, or I could right click and choose copy. Either one works. Place my cursor right here and I can right click and choose paste. Um, uh, we're going to do paste, but a control V as in Victor or command V as in Victor does paste. You also had the paste button right up here. And the reason it turned pink was this paragraph was pre-formatted with pink text before we even opened up the document, right? Save the file. Step seven, italicize the sentence is interested in career in the industry insurance industry. Da, 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 da. So I find interested in a career in the insurance industry. It wants this entire paragraph. So I could triple click or I could click hold and drag and apply the italics right here. I'll do it on the mini toolbar. Save my file. This is easy. Okay. The next one, step eight, add the words the program to the paragraph beginning. The following is so that it reads the following is the program for the day. So the following is the program for the day. So you're just typing in some text, practicing typing, save my file. Okay. 
Next one is create a bulleted list beginning with a paragraph 9.30 a.m. and ending with a paragraph 2.30 p.m. to make it easier to read. So I'm going to turn this list right here into a bulleted list. I can select all the text. I like to select from the bottom up. That's my style. Again, I showed you in class. You could also have pulled your cursor out here to the left edge with the white arrow and click, hold, and drag down. That would also select it and bullets are on the paragraph panel, and we're just gonna click the bullet button. There are other styles of bullets. We'll talk about those more later, but we just want the rounded bullets. Save my file, and just to do a quick check, yep, still looking pretty good. I'm matching, it looks pretty good. All right, done with that step. All right, step 10, emphasize the bulleted list as follow. Change the font of the text in the bulleted list to Bookman Old Style and change the font color in the bulleted list to pink accent one darker 50%. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to reselect my text. Remember, I selected from the bottom up or I can pull my cursor out here and use the white arrow. Either one works. I want to change the font face. So right now it's Calibri. That's the style of font. I want to change it to something else. I want to change it to Bookman Old Style. So this drop down list will allow you to scroll through all of them. And you can see it's kind of changing the background. It's also alphabetical. So if I just type a B, O, O, I can actually go faster to the font. And we want Bookman, just a little bit farther, Bookman Old Style. That's the one we want right there. And then we also want to change the font color. That's right up here on the font toolbar. Font color is the A, the a with the red under it. We want to find pink accent one. So there we go, pink accent one. Again, you're going to float over any of these little boxes and there and hover and wait, and it's going to tell you what the name of the color is. You're going to match it with what you have in the assignment. All right. Oh, sorry. It was pink. My bad. Control Z. I knew it looked a little bit lighter. I was looking farther down. It's pink X and one darker 50%. My bad. And they even tell you it's the fifth column, sixth row. All right. So that's pink accent one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Column one, two, three, four, fifth column, sixth row, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's actually the color we're looking for. And you'll see it matches the darker 50%. All right, there we go. Step 11, delete the repeat repetitious sentence. Places are limited in the paragraph beginning reserve a place. So right down here, it says reserve a place. It says places are limited. It also says space is limited. That's why we're deleting it. So I'm going to highlight this text and I'm going to press delete. And you'll see I have two periods there. So I can press delete one more time to get rid of the extra period. Save my file. Okay. Draw attention, step 12, draw attention to the web address and phone number in the paragraph beginning reserve a place as follows to make the information easy to read. First, we want to remove the hyperlink from the web address uh, to format it as regular text. So this down here is a web address. All right. If I hover over it, I will, and I'll let go of my mouse, Microsoft will tell us where I could go to click on this and it'll take me there, right? I actually have to hold the control key down on the keyboard and then click that link. We don't want it to be a clickable uh, link. We just want it to have text inside of it. So if I want to remove that hyperlink, I want to get rid of that formatting. A lot of times you will find the tools you need by right clicking. So if I right click on this, you can see right here in the shortcut menu, there's a remove hyperlink. All right, that is how you do that. I could have also come up here to the clear formatting um, and use that, but I like the right click. I think that's a little bit easier. All right, so that step is done. All right, apply the outline text effect. Outline text effect are the keywords we're looking for. Pink accent one to the web address and then the phone number and as well to the phone number. So come over here, select my text. I want to apply the outline text effect pink accent one. So I'm looking for something called text effects. Since I'm formatting my text or my font, the first place I'm going to look is right here in the font panel. And you're going to start hovering your cursor to find something called text effects. That's font color. That's text highlight. The fuzzy blue A are text effects, right? So that's what I'm looking for. And I want, when I click that arrow, first of all, these are pre-built. They're just pre-made for you. So you could pick one of these, or we can come down here and really just dial in what we want. They want us to do an outline. So I'm looking for outline and they want us to choose pink accent one. And so there it is, pink accent one. And you can see there's like a pink outline over um, the black text, okay? They want us to apply the same formatting to the 552411. So I can just highlight that text and go back to outline pink accent one, and it does the same thing. Now here's a bonus learning moment, control Z. 
whoops, I'm going to show you another way to do that. I'm going to change this one again, put that one back. All right. So once you've applied formatting to something in your document, there's a tool called Format Painter. It's right up here on the toolbar that allows you to take the formatting from one piece of the text and apply it somewhere else. So all I have to do is either highlight this text or just have my cursor in this text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck up the formatting here and paint it over the numbers because I know I want it to be the same. So I'm just have my cursor in here. Microsoft Word knows this is the text I'm in. I'm going to turn on the Format Painter one time, click the paintbrush. When I pull my cursor out, you can see it changes to kind of a eye bar with a paintbrush. And then I'm going to click, hold my mouse down and drag it. And when I do, it applies that formatting. Okay. Either method is okay. Just a bonus learning moment. Couldn't help myself. Save my file. Cross out this one. All right, we're almost done. Two, three more steps. All right, 13. Format the paragraph beginning reserve a place as follows to make it stand out. Center it and apply the paragraph shading pink accent one lighter 80% to the entire paragraph. So first we're going to select the paragraph right? And they want us to center it. So under paragraph, that's center alignment. We already knew how to do that. While this text is still selected, I want to put color behind it, shading, right? I want to fill it with color. You're going to find that tool right here in the paragraph. It's a paint bucket tool. It's called shading and it allows you to dump color into anything that's selected, right? So it's an easy way to kind of just make something um, look interesting. All right, so sorry, my phone started to go off. So we want pink accent one, lighter 80%. I happen to know that's the first one right here. Click it, and you can see it just filled. It almost made kind of a rectangle. And if I look down here at my answer key, you can see, wow, well, it is really just matching up perfect. That looks awesome. All right, I like that. Okay, save our file. All right, next one, step 14, insert a picture as follows to include the company logo. So this is one of the extra files you downloaded. It says in the blank line at the bottom of the page, insert this file and then resize it to a height of 0.7. So I'm going to place my cursor where I want the picture to be inserted. And since I'm inserting something, I'm going to go to the insert ribbon to insert the picture. And I have it already saved on my computer in a folder. that I have buried. So, all right, so I have lots of subfolders on my computer. I happen to save my stuff in a different place. So here's the file. I just double click it and inserts this giant picture. It puts it on the second page because there's not enough room on the first page. While the picture selected, my picture format ribbon is open and I can change the picture height to 0.7. Again, I can either click these. These are called spinners. These arrows are called spinners. I can just click point down or I can just type in 0.7, press enter, and it adds the picture. Easy. All right. And then the last step is to add a page border. I'm actually going to zoom out for this one so you can see the whole thing. So you can see they have a dotted pink line that appears around the document. So we're adding a, bo a dashed border. We're going to change the color and we're going to change the width of it. All right. So to add a border, you can find this tool in two places. The first place is that on, in the paragraph panel, there's a button called borders. All right. And I can click that and actually the reason these are not shown up is because I still have my image selected. So actually I'm going to come back here, deselect my image by clicking anywhere in the document, and then I can go back and grab that tool. All right. So you can see all these borders now appear. Now where my cursor is, if you can see my cursor in the middle of the document, when I start hovering over these, you can see how it's drawing lines. This is the easiest one to see. You can see it's drawing a box around it. Um, so I can borders are a fancy term. It means lines. And you can add these lines or borders around text, around paragraphs, around objects, or you can even add them around an entire page. So if I come down here to the bottom of this menu, I can choose borders and shading, and it gives me the full dialog box to add borders. Now take note, this dialog box has three tabs, one called borders, one called page borders, and one called shading. We don't want to add a border around text. We want to add a page border. So if you grab the borders, option from this menu, you got to make sure you're on page border. I'm going to hit cancel. The other place to find it 
is there's a shortcut on the design ribbon, there is a button called page border at the end. And when you do that, it opens up the same dialog box, but you're actually on the page border tab. You can go between the three, but we want to add a page border. All right. It wants us to select the dash page border, which is the third border in the style list. So here's the style list. One, two, three. So right over here, as you start dialing these settings, you get a little preview of what it's going to look like. All right. I want the dashed. We want the color to be pink accent one. Whoops. So I know that's this guy here. We've been working with the same color, so you should start to see, oh, this color palette, I kind of get it. It's very similar. So I go pink accent one, now it looks pink. And then it wants the width to be one point. I choose the one point, it gets a little bit thicker. I click OK, and voila, I've got this fancy border around my document, and look at that. They look identical. I think I might get an A on this. Okay, this might look a little bit bigger. This is the right size. Let me just see. 0.7, right? Just double check my own work. That is 0.7. That's correct. Okay. I'm going to select these. We save our file. And then, do I have anything? Okay. So now let's turn it in, right? Let me even go through that process so you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to, it even tells you your document should look like the final figure. Save your changes, close the document, and then exit Word. That is important. So I am going to exit Word and I'm going to exit the instructions. I'm on the place where I'm submitting, so I'm now going to save my work. I'm going to um, drag, I'm going to actually, I already have my file saved. Here's my uh, Windows Explorer. I'm actually going to drag my file, one with a two, into the box. But I'm going to show you, you know what, I, I haven't even planned this. I'm going to show you what this looks like if I do the wrong file. Let's say I'm trying to turn in the one that has a one. I grab the one with a one. Watch what happens when I try to upload it. Do you see how I get an error? Match the file name. Okay, okay, I made a mistake. So I need to grab the number two. Boom, that, you should be like, okay, it's working, yay. I'm done, I got the blue button to submit it. I can hit submit, it says, yay, it graded it. But you have no idea what your grade is until you review the graded summary report. So you can click that, it's gonna download a report. It's gonna actually download the instructions, the grade, the rubric, right, in this format. And right here you can see at the top, I got 50 out of 50. If I didn't, this would say 43 out of 50, the 43 would be red, and then you would scroll through this. Let's turn this on, let's turn that off. You could scroll through this, and you could see it would actually print in red, you didn't do the bold text, zero out of three, right? It would tell you what you missed. It would even show you your, this would be your document, and it would actually have call outs in your document where you made the mistakes. So that's actually gonna tell you what you missed here, and it'll show you what you missed visually. So you would open up your original document, make the changes, save it again, and then upload it a second time for a higher grade, okay? All right, so we are, this video is going pretty long. Um, I think we are pretty close to being done. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and upload this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps you. And literally I'm helping you do your homework this weekend. So yay for that. And of course, email me if you have any questions.